Four weeks later, 20-year-old university student Barbara Leach was murdered in the early hours on her way home from a pub in Bradford. She was hit over the head with a hammer and stabbed. Like Josephine Whitaker, she had no link to prostitution and was murdered nowhere near a red light district. A house in Ashgrove is only 150 yards down the corner, yet Barbara chose to leave her friends and walk off alone in the dark. Somewhere along the way, she met the man they call the Yorkshire Ripper. Uh, um, I don't like to think of what I'm losing. Compensate us for the loss of Barbara. The Ripper in the tape recorded message had warned that he would strike again, possibly in September or October. Were you prepared for this? Well, of course, we can't cater for the uh, killing of the odd female at any time. What's worrying the police is that despite the Ripper's last warning, he was still able to strike again. The truth is, they couldn't do much to stop him, or even with his voice on tape, his handwriting, and the evidence of 12 murders, they still don't know who he is. All that's left to them is optimism and persistence. After the murder of Barbara Leach, the police acknowledged that all women were at risk, not just those involved in prostitution. But this didn't change the direction of the investigation. Goldfield on sick leave, his boss, Chief Constable Ron Gregory, took charge and launched a huge publicity campaign to find the man behind the letters and tape. Exhibition spaces were set up with the tagline, Flush Out the Ripper. Samples of the handwriting were widely circulated and there was even a free phone number for the public to call to see if they recognised the voice. yesterday launched a, a massive advertising campaign which is unprecedented or seemed to be in criminal history as an attempt to catch Britain's most wanted uh, criminal, the Yorkshire Ripper, where previously more conventional...